everyone, I'm Dr. Lisa with Tri-State Veterinary Services. This is my assistant, Ryan, and Chad the goat. And today we're gonna to be going over hoof trimming and small ruminants. We will be addressing not only how to do hoof trimming, but also how often, when, and the best way to restrain. Because I find that, especially with these silly guys, the hardest thing my clients come to find is, it's not even just the hoof trimming, it's keeping them restrained. So we'll go over all of that today. Hoof trimming is something that you wanna make sure you are doing on a regular basis. So it really depends in terms of timing of when to get to do hoof trimming. So the best time to do hoof trimming really depends on how quickly your goat's feet are growing. So if you have some goats that have a lot of area to move, a lot of rocks to climb on, they're going to not need hoof trimming as frequently. They'll wear it down themselves. Some goats will need it more often than others. I usually recommend hoof trimming at least once every two months to start. If you're finding you don't need to do it as often, you can do it once every three weeks or, or every three months or every four months um, or as often as needed. Depending on the season, you may have to do it more often than others. Usually in the winter with the hard ground, you don't have to do it as often as you would in the summer when the ground is softer or more wet. Different breeds usually need their feet done at different times as well. So it's best to just get a feel of how often your goats need it and then address it from there. When it comes to equipment, I recommend just any old type of hoof trimmer. I like the orange handle kind. You can get these from Amazon. You can get them from Blue Seal, from Tractor Supply, anywhere. Mm. The biggest thing is make sure that they are sharp. So whether it be getting them sharpened somewhere, sharpening them themselves, or just replacing them as needed, make sure you have nice sharp hoof trimmers. It'll make your life a lot easier. Also make sure that the grip you're holding and the handles fit your hand. There's different ones that are smaller or larger, and if they're not comfortable for you to use, they're not going to be easy to use on your goat. The third thing is talking about restraint. So obviously, they don't love it. So what we try and do is make sure that the animal is as still as possible and the animal is as supported as possible. So either have an assistant to help you or have a stand for them to be on. In this case, we'll use an assistant. So when I have my assistants hold the goats, I have them hold up in the front and then I use my legs and the rest of my body to brace the goats. A lot of times I find that when they are uh, resisting or reluctant to have their feet trimmed, it's less about the actual trimming and more about the fact that we're making them go from four legs to three and they're off balance. So when I start with the front legs, what I try and have done is I'll have my assistant up front. You can see how Ryan is holding the head, but also using her legs to brace the goat against her body. So this way, when I pick up the front leg and he is put off balance, we're allowing him to lean against her. As you'll see, I'm going to put my front leg under his chest. And what that does is it gives him my knee to put his weight on as well as can lean against Ryan, if he feels supported, then he won't fight as much. So again, I'm putting my knee underneath him. I'm holding him with the front of my body and Ryan is allowing to go against his knees. Sometimes giving a little squeeze will actually calm them as well. From here, I have good visualization of the hoof. I am not bent over, it's safe on my back as I'm in, in a kneeling position, and I'm able to address the hoof as needed. What I usually like to do is to do one side of the front leg, and then I'll move to the back. And so what you'll see here is I'm gonna move to the back leg, I'm going to put my knee underneath their belly to give them support, and Ryan's going to adjust a little bit moving up front so that picking up the hind leg's gonna push the goat forward, he can then lean against her in the front versus leaning against her on the side. So the back legs are usually where they resist the most. And again, it's because they feel off balance. So I'll have them kind of up against my body. And in some cases, if I can, you know, if they're light enough, I'll even kind of put them right over my leg like so. And in doing so, I have both back feet Ryan's got him braced in the front and he feels supported and he's not fighting me as much. Larger goats, I'd allow them to have the one foot on the ground, but I would still use the rest of my body to hold that foot up. So I'm not, what I'm not doing is I'm not trying to just crank up this leg and allowing him to kick on it. I'm using the rest of my body to stabilize him. So he feels more stable, I'm not hurting his joints and I'm also not hurting my back.
So now that I've got him in position and you can see that I've got my knee right underneath him and I'm allowing him to rest on it. I'm looking at the bottom of the hoof so he doesn't have a whole lot to trim up front here. But what I'll start with is just going along the sides like so. So I'm going to trim back those side walls so that I can see this obvious white line. I know. And at the very least, your goal is to make the bottom of the foot be level with those side lines. So you don't have to take a whole lot off the heel here, as you can see. The heel is pretty much flat with the rest of the hoof. But I'm taking off these side walls for two reasons. One, so that I'm making this level so he has a flat surface to walk on. But two, if that's curled under like so, if this continues to grow and it begins to curl, mud and rocks and such can get stuck underneath, resulting in infection such as white line disease or abscesses. What I also do while I'm down here, especially this time of year, is try and clean out the mud in between their feet. So when we talk about hoof rot, it's actually not an infection within the hoof. It's actually a infection in between the toes. So all this mud and everything in between, obviously we can't clean that out every day this time of year. But by once a month or every other month getting in there, cleaning it out, making sure there's no infection in there, we can prevent a whole lot of infection and pain in our goat's feet. So again, these front ones don't need a whole lot. They're not perfect. They don't need to be. So long as we have a flat surface and I don't have any areas where mud and stuff can get packed in, we're looking good. So they're pretty balanced. As always, you want to make sure, just like you would on your dog's quick or anything else, if you start seeing pink, stop. So red means stop, pink means stop. You don't want to go too low. So in this case, we could go a little lower, but there's no need to go too crazy here. So this is a great example of a back foot in these goats, especially the pygmy goats. Genetically, they don't have the best feet. And so a lot of times what we get is this real overgrowth, narrowing of the foot, some abnormal kind of curling to the toe. Now I know I trimmed his feet maybe two months ago and we've already got this much growth. And it just so happens that very commonly the back feet are worse off than the front. So a lot of times people are like, I don't even know where to start with this. So what I like to start with is again, same thing, go to the side walls. We're gonna take off this ridge here so that we get this nice healthy white line. I also will start on the other side again following this normal white line that should be there taking it back until I get that healthy kind of line. In the front I'm trimming back the toe just a little bit at a time so that we can get more of a clear vision and you can start to see here as I get a little lower you can actually see the tip of that white piece here. So that I don't wanna go any deeper than that. Again, if you start seeing this pink, you don't wanna go any farther. So that's as far back as I wanna go there. Here, now that I've trimmed back the sides, I can take down the middle so that it's flat. Again, if you start seeing pink, don't go any farther. In terms of these back heels, sometimes you need to trim a little off, sometimes you don't. In his case, there's not a whole lot to trim off, but I'm starting to see some of this kind of ridging here where the mud can get stuck. So that's something that I want to flatten out because again, any folds or cracks can harbor mud. We go over to this side here. Again, there's a little bit more of this curling and abnormal shape, so I'm just going to trim stuff back until I get what is considered more of a normal shape. And if you're not sure, just take less and do more often. Eventually, you're going to get more of a natural idea of what your goat's hooves should look like. And if it's easier to just take less and do it more often, that's fine. So I can take that off so that it's all nice and flat. I'll use sometimes the tips of my, my trimmers to kind of use it to remove some of the mud that gets packed in. So again, we don't want to jab anything, but you can use this. You can get a hoof pick. You can use a brush just to remove some of that mud so that you can really see what you're trimming. The more you do it, the more often you do it, the easier it gets and the less you actually have to change about the foot. Any questions, you can always give us a call. We are happy to send technicians out to give you tutorials or even assist with any of the hoof trimming.